Hey folks, and welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today I'm going to teach you the basics of Andrew's Pitchfork. It's a very interesting name for a market indicator. And I've seen it mostly used on daily candlestick charts for swing traders, long-term traders, medium-term traders, that kind of thing. Uh, but I suppose it could also be used for intraday trading as well, although I'm not sure if it's quite as powerful or as commonly used for that purpose. All right. And before I get started, uh, if you would like some coaching for your trading or investing, I do offer that. You can email me for the coaching at davidmodell at gmail.com. And if you like these technical indicator videos, why don't you give me a thumbs up right now in this video? And that'll encourage me and let me know that you'd like to see these kinds of videos. All right. Let's go to stockcharts.com. I want to give them credit. And perhaps there are other uh, platforms and websites that have Andrew's Pitchfork, but you'll have to check on your own platform or software website to check on that to see if they even offer Andrew's Pitchfork. Uh, but here it is on StockCharts.com. They do offer it, but I'm going to have to show you exactly how to find it, okay? Because it's not in the list of overlays and indicators and all that stuff. All right, so first you put up the stock chart. This one's Home Depot, daily candlestick chart. And then you go below the chart and you go to annotate. You see where it says there? All right, so it's considered an annotation on stockcharts.com. And so you click on annotate and you're gonna get all this stuff here, okay? And then you see that rainbow there? I, I call it a rainbow, a bunch of curvy lines, three of them. I'm gonna click on that rainbow looking button there and you get Fibonacci retracement and all kinds of cool stuff. Now I'm gonna to have to hit on my keyboard control minus, control minus, control minus uh, until I finally get Andrew's pitchfork. There it is, <laughs> okay. I, actu I actually had to uh, make, this, make everything smaller on the screen in order to see Andrew's pitchfork. But here it is, okay, so the rainbow button and then Andrew's pitchfork. Click on that one. All right, and now I'm gonna go Control Plus on my keyboard, Control Plus a bunch of times until my chart is back to normal size, <laughs> okay? I'll make it even bigger. There you go, nice and big for you, okay. And unfortunately, you have all this stuff here and I, I can't get rid of that. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so what is the Andrews Pitchfork? Well, what it is is it looks kind of like a pitchfork as you'll see in a moment, and it connects uh, the overall trend. It, it kind of draws a line through the overall trend through the candlesticks, okay? And so what you're going to have to do is, and this is this involves a lot of interpretation, okay? This is something you're going to have to learn to draw yourself unless you have software that'll draw it for you. But even then, you're going to have to probably identify a line that goes through the overall trend of where that stock is going, where the candles are. And you can kind of see it if you just look at the lower left and connect that with the upper right. That's the overall trend line, assuming that's going up, okay? Maybe it's going sideways, maybe it's going down. Uh, but just from where it starts on the chart and where it ends, that's the, and you draw the trend line right through the middle. And it's also going to give you not only the, the midline through the middle, but also you're going to have to identify the highest swing high and the lowest swing low on the chart. And so you're probably going to want to have a chart, if it's daily candlesticks, like this is around six months worth of uh, five or six months worth of daily candles okay if you don't have that much it might not be enough to really identify a long or medium term trend for daily candlesticks all right so you want to make sure you have enough candlesticks on there not too many but enough a decent amount that you can actually identify these trends all right so what is a swing high well uh, you see how the the candlesticks you know they swing upwards okay so you want the peak of that that's the swing high and then it swings downwards and that's you know the bottom of that is the swing low and then it swings high the peak is here and then it swung low again and the bottom of that is here and then it swung high again so what is the biggest swing high well really it's this one but i i would consider the really the biggest one to be that one that's a huge swing high okay so not necessarily the highest price because that's just going to be the latest swing high probably, okay? It's not always the, the most recent one. You want the most prominent one, the one that really sticks out, 
okay the, just the the huge move this is a pretty big move too but this is a big big move okay and what's the lowest swing low uh, well I mean the lowest one is going to be probably the earliest one okay like this one or maybe this one but those aren't big swing lows so you want the the really big one I mean it, it took a big Home Depot stock took a big dive here I consider this to be the lowest swing low not the lowest in price necessarily but the the biggest move okay so look for the biggest swing high in terms of the size of the move and the biggest swing low in terms of the size of the move okay so we're gonna call this the swing high we're gonna call this the swing low and the midline goes right through the middle of the overall price action from the the beginning to the end okay in terms of time that's that's the best I can explain it and so on stockcharts.com you would click on where the trend line generally starts it's not necessarily going to be at the bottom it kind of goes through here as I see it so it kind of starts around here okay and it puts a little dot there a little yellow dot if you can see that and then you can either click on the swing low and then the swing high or the swing high and then the swing low it doesn't matter the order now doesn't matter for the the two swings okay I'm just gonna click after you click the uh, the beginning of the overall trend midline now you you wanna click on the uh, the swing let's say the swing high first that's okay you could also do the swing low first I'm gonna click on the swing high including the wick alright uh, not just the body of the candle the wick okay bam there it is yellow dot and then I'm gonna quick click on the bottom of the swing low including the wicks which is around let's say here and there it is look at that it automatically after you, you identify three points through three clicks then it draws it's pretty cool for a, for a free website it's free right now uh, and it's pretty cool that it drew the pitchfork for me just automatically all right and you can adjust these things you, you can uh, click you know grab it and drag it you know the the uh, the swing high right and the swing low in case you miss, in case you do a bad job <laughs> of, uh, you know, you click the wrong place, okay? And then you, you can, you know, let's say the trend line, may, maybe, you know, you can kind of adjust it. I'm kind of seeing it as around, let's say, I, I, I kind of want it to go through up to here. It's about there, let's say. I'm gonna adjust it as best as I can. I'd say that's, that's pretty close to the overall trend. Okay, so that's the midline going going through the the general trend of where the stock went and then the highest swing high the lowest swing low in terms of price moves and there we go you get a nice looking pitchfork there and that will give you not only the midline where you can expect it maybe to kind of center around in the near future uh, that's the midline okay so because it doesn't stick to the midline that closely but it always seems to come back to it otherwise it wouldn't be a midline would it all right and so perhaps I might expect it to to want to come back to that midline in the future I can extrapolate that perhaps and this does not work perfectly it does not work hundred percent of the time okay no indicator does <laughs> as far as I know but uh, it can kinda help you to predict maybe a little bit all right and then the swing high provided the up the it's kind of like a channel here the the upper line and the lower line and so this line could be interpreted as resistance in the future okay and this line could be interpreted as support all right and so you have a channel between this line and that line and it looks kind of like a pitchfork doesn't it all right it's pretty cool and so we might think, okay, in the future, if we can extrapolate, if, if the candles reach the upper line, that could be a good a possible time to, to sell, take profits, right? And then if it hits that bottom line, it could be uh, considered support, a place to buy. Uh, or you could look at it differently. You could say, uh-oh, if, if you get a big red candle below the support line here of the channel, that could be considered bearish. Uh, so yeah, it depends how you like to play the channel that's up to you how you interpret channels but it, it establishes a midline that the candlesticks might keep coming back to because it's done it in the past and uh, a channel where you get a possible support support and resistance all right and it takes some practice to be able to draw these lines and so I recommend practicing before you try to apply any real capital to this I'll give you one more example with uh, Johnson & Johnson daily candlestick chart once again let's see where would you draw the the midline all right well uh, probably probably from here through let's say here again it doesn't have to hit that last candle okay uh, because I I see it kind of going from 
here, right? Oop, uh, I'm sorry. Actually, you have to. I have to start over. So I'm going to click that annotate button again. Okay, and then uh, let me hit Control minus so I can see what I'm doing. Pull out a little bit, and there's that rainbow. Okay, and Control minus on my keyboard so I can see what I'm doing because it doesn't show everything on my screen. There it is, Andrew's pitchfork, okay. And then let me hit Control plus on the keyboard a few times. So I get a nice big chart here that we can both see. There it is, okay. All right, so, uh, so let's see. So I've decided I'm gonna put the first yellow dot here for the beginning of the midline, let's say around here, and you, and you can adjust it later. And then I'm thinking it goes up uh, probably, probably through here, right? If I were to draw a straight line, which I'm going to do. What's the biggest swing high? Uh, mm, I'd say the defining one is around here. I mean, it had a big swing here. But I'll try both, okay? I'm gonna put it here for the swing high. I'm definitely putting the swing low here, including the wick, by the way. All right, let's see how that looks. Uh, first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust the, uh, the trend line a little bit. There we go. Okay, just to get that overall trend, seems to go through here. Let's pull this back a little bit. You see, if, if we put the, yeah, I don't know if I like that too much. I mean, it's okay. And then we put it here. I'd say this is probably a more reasonable pitchfork, looking pitchfork. So you want to play with it a little bit. If, you, if I put the, you know, the, yeah, the swing high of the pitchfork here, that's a very strange looking pitchfork. It's very angular. I mean, I could use this, it's possible. But as you can see, the, the candles don't even come close to the, to the resistance line here. It's so far away. Whereas if I put it here, yeah, the candles are coming much closer to that, that, uh, that resistance line here, okay? So, yeah, I mean, the prongs of the pitchfork aren't as big, okay? But still, I, I like this better. And so I'm gonna use that. And I definitely see the, the swing low here, for sure. All right, so, and we can extrapolate, and, and we can maybe kind of do a little bit of adjusting here with the overall midline. I kind of like it like that. And you adjust it until you like it. And yeah, I, I can see that being the midline, okay? And uh, the price action always seems to sooner or later come back to it, or at least it did in the past, right? Kind of centers around it. It's, it's clinging, clinging closely to it here because I adjusted it that way. And uh, yeah, so this could be your resistance line, this could be your support line, you've got the channel here, the midline of the channel could be helpful. And uh, yeah, you can interpret the channel how you will. All right, so that's how I interpret the Andrews Pitchfork. Maybe you have your interpretation. So feel free to leave comments below this video. Give me a thumbs up right now if you liked it and you want more videos like this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why not do that right now, okay? And hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you whenever I put out videos like this. If you want the coaching, go ahead and hit me up by email at davidmodell at gmail.com. I've helped a lot of traders, and I think I can help you too. All right, thanks a lot for watching and listening. I'll talk to you again soon.